Hi and welcome back. In our previous video, let's see, we went over the GPIO related code. In this video, we're going to finish up the code by starting off with the mini UART and then moving on to the linker. So let's get started. So, first, we're going to include the GPIO header that we created. See, we'll add the utils. I'm not sure if we'll need it, but we might as well add it anyway. So now I'm going to create a define here for the pins that we're going to be using for the the TXD and the RXD, which is the uh, the read and the transmit and receive for the mini UART, and those pins are 14 and 15. So in our UART init function, the first thing we're going to need to do is actually set up the functions for those uh, pins to be ALT5. So we'll use TXD GF ALT5, and we'll do the same for RXD GF ALT5. And now we need to enable those pins. So we'll use that function we created last time for TXD and the same for RXD. So now let's go back over here to the data sheet. You remember we have the AUX enables register here. If we go down and look at the register details right here, we'll see mini UART enable is the very first bit in that register. So we need to set that bit. Doing so, we can use our regs AUX, um, which yeah, we need to include the peripherals for that. Peripherals slash AUX dot H. Okay, so now we just set enables to 1. That'll set the first bit to 1. Now there's a couple other of uh, registers that we need to set up to get the uh, mini UART running here. First we set control to 0 so we can set some of these extra flags including the I air. We'll set to 0. The LCR will set to 3. That sets it into 8-bit mode. So then we have the uh, MCR we set to 0. Let's see, and now for, um, uh, let's see, for different versions of the Raspberry Pi, we're going to have to set the baud rate differently here. So for Raspberry Pi 3 has a 250 megahertz clock. That's the system clock. So we'll say mu baud rate equals 270. And now if we go into the data sheet here, you'll see where we do the calculation for this. Right down here in this section. There we go, mini UART. So, uh, so the baud rate is equal to the uh, system clock frequency divided by 8 times the baud rate register value plus 1. The baud rate register value is what we put in there as 270. So that's going to mean that, that we're using 115200 as the baud rate at 250 megahertz. So now the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 has a 500 megahertz system clock, so we just need to adjust that value. And 541 is the correct value to use for that at 500 megahertz. And so now when we're done here with these values we set the control to 3 and that should be everything enabled so let's just send some returns here because we get a lot of debug output from uh, the Raspberry Pi bootloader that we included in our config so I just want to put a separator there so we can see our code's difference. And we want to include the mini UART up there. So let's start here by creating the first function UART send. We're going to send a character. So now in order to send a character, let's look at the data sheet here. There's a specific register LSR 
yeah, LSR register. There's um, bit five here in the register is how you determine if the FIFO can accept at least one byte. That means it's ready to start getting data so that that we can send. So what we need to do is just loop until that bit is unset. Or I'm sorry, until that bit is set. So that bit we'll, we can use, we can end that with 0x20, that'll give us that fifth bit. And we can just put a semicolon here because we're just going to loop, while loop forever until that, um, until that flag is set so we can actually send data. And then we send data with the IO register. So we just set the value in the IO register and the, uh, the hardware will take it from there. So now we'll do the UART receive which we actually return a char and we basically are going to do the exact same thing but on this one you'll see that um, bit 0 is the one so this bit is set if the receive FIFO holds at least one value to read so it's gonna we're basically gonna do this same loop while bit 1 isn't set that means nothing's available to read yet so and then we're just going to read that same register. But you know, this is a 32-bit register, so we want to end it with 0xff. So we just get one byte. You see that's a reg32. We just want one byte, one char out of it. Then we'll add a convenience function here, just so we can send a full string at a time instead of one char at a time. So what we're going to do is just while you know the dereference value is not the null terminator we'll do a uart send just that dereference that current value and then stir plus plus now also about up here we want to add a check so if that value is slash n that's only going to do return it's not going to do the it's it's only going to do a line feed it's not going to do returns so we're going to add a slash r in there automatically whenever you do slash n so you don't have to type slash r slash n all the time so now the only thing left here is the linker so we'll start with the uh, sections and right at the top the first section is going to be our dot text dot boot so now this is going to put that right at the top of the binary file and if you remember this dot text dot boot is straight from our boot file where we define that this is the section dot text dot boot so the linker is going to put that code right here at the top then after that we'll just copy this and we have the dot text section the read only data section ro data And then the normal data section, just dot data. And then after here, we, we have the BSS section, which we actually want to align that on a as a 8-bit value. So it'll be aligned on 8 bits. And let's see, let me, let me add a add the linker script. There you go. Now we have a little nicer looking code with the uh, plugin. So, uh, yeah, if you remember right here, we have our BSS begin and our BSS end where we're subtracting the value and mem zeroing the whole section. That's basically what we're doing this section here for. And this is the static data. If you can look up BSS, it's a, it's a place where static um, uninitialized variables are put. And we just want to um, mem zero that whole section at our, as a part of our brute process. And, and there's some more details you can get if you look up the linker script details on the internet. There's plenty of information about how those work. So now let's go ahead and make clean and just run a make. 
and it looks like everything succeeded except for the process of copying to the boot media so that'll bring us to our next section actually where we'll cover downloading the Raspberry Pi OS and creating a bootable drive out of it so that we can copy our kernel to that boot drive so again thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.